the Karoo. This semi-desert covers two-thirds of South Africa. Because of its climate and sparse vegetation, few people settled in this area. About 300 million years ago, when the supercontinent of Gondwana was formed, huge rivers flowed from mountain ranges north and south of present-day South Africa into the Karoo Basin, creating a huge inland sea. During the next 100 million years, these rivers deposited layers and layers of sand and mud up to 12 kilometers thick. These conditions were favourable for a most remarkable preservation of fossils. So what we're going to do now is, is drive up here. Um, this is the Comsberg Park. On one of his many trips into the Karoo, John found some animal tracks which were embedded many millions of years ago. Uh, and then we head into one of these wind farm areas we've already looked at and we head down southwards from this, mm. this road here. The trackway is just here. This new discovery needed to be further researched. Okay, this, is a, this is a diagram showing the rock succession of the Abraham's Kraal formation. From the bottom upwards it's about 2.2 kilometers thick and it's subdivided into various units here. On the right hand side the diagram shows the distribution of different groups of fossils within the Abraham's Kraal formation, groups like Dinocephalians and Dicynodonts. The trackway site is probably in the lower part here, what's called the Leufle member down here. And you can see that at the time of this study, which is in 1994, that there were no vertebrate body fossil sites known that low down from the Abraham's Kraal formation, but we're still hoping. Often, the only sign of habitation are the farm fences. Most of them have seen better times. <laughs> Equipped with the latest state-of-the-art tools, we set off to the trackway side. We've got nice shallow water ripples here and there's a margin of a... On the way we came pond. across a ripple surface. This is yeah. proof that the area was underwater millions of years ago. By the shape of the ripples, scientists can ascertain if they were laid down in a quiet pool or by a flowing river. They can even ascertain the direction a river was flowing. In a dry riverbed was a small section of exposed bedrock with the embedded yeah. animal tracks. The most prominent features are these parallel like tram lines, sets of two or three continuous impressions which we suspect might have been generated by a largish amphibian floating in the water, perhaps drifting with the current, hence the, the straight lines, and just dragging two or three fingers onto, onto the bed of, of the pond or lake, um, and, and just making those tram lines. 
Then in addition, we have sets of what an exhilarating feeling to look at a place and knowing that there was once millions of years ago a shallow pond with strange animals in it. And the most interesting trackway so far is this one here. Down the center line has a series of arcuate impressions which would be caused by the tail of the animal uh, sort of swaying from side to side. This is, so this is an animal which is low down on the ground, splayed feet. There's actually some belly impressions there. Our task was to carefully clear and expose as much as possible of the tracks without damaging or scratching the surface. Hard work at 35 degrees in the shade. And no shade. Professional malingerer. By late afternoon we had cleared as much as was possible and in the setting sun the tracks became beautifully visible. Those marks <laughs> cut through and erase the little rills. Yeah. The little rills were formed when the water is really shallow. And then probably maybe the water became deeper and this would all be covered in mud. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's drifting in, in the lake and the pond or in the river, and he's got, in, in this case I was thinking of his, his ha fingers down, maybe looking for prey in the, in the mud. And as, as he's drifting down, they, they produce these tram lines. But now I'm thinking it's perhaps more likely that his head would be up and the back of his body would be further down, there's probably his toes, which would be dragging on the bottom. Happy guy. Yeah. Interesting was the five-toed animal dragging its tail through the mud. Here one can even see the impression of the belly where the animal must have rested. This animal must have floated in the pond, just touching the crest of the ripples with its feet. So there's a ripple surface and the fish are swimming, just touching the crest of the ripples. Now it's time for a well-deserved sundowner. The next day, Dr. Roger Smith from the South African Museum joined us. He is the expert on Karoo fossils, specializing in the study of the Permian-Triassic mass extinction 251.6 million years ago. These tracks are somewhat older, most likely early Permian. While we were looking for fossils in the vicinity, Roger laid out a one by one meter grid to document the site. It's, it's more like um, a continuous contact with the sediment and it's just ridges. Like a jigsaw puzzle, this place will help to increase our knowledge of life as it existed millions of years ago.